Last week, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommended that all Americans start wearing face coverings when they go out in public. This is in addition to the current guidelines for social distancing. The problem is we're already at a shortage of face masks for our healthcare workers, meaning we shouldn't buy N95 face masks or surgical masks. Instead, the CDC recommended that we make our own masks. So, for the first time ever, we're about to get crafty for safety. It's like Martha Stewart exploded in here. The question is, what materials do you use to make a face mask that'll be the most effective? So we dug into the latest research and got some answers for you. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. After the Surgeon General released the recommendation to wear face masks, Scott Segal, the chairman of anesthesiology at Wake Forest Baptist Health, released the preliminary results of a research project he launched just two weeks ago to study the effectiveness of the materials in homemade masks. According to Siegel, who studied 13 different materials used to make homemade surgical masks, the number one most effective material was quilter's cotton. This material outperformed the others, filtering out 70 to 79% of small particles, including viruses. That's even better than surgical masks which Seagal said filter out about 65% of particles. Now for reference, N95 masks are still the most effective, filtering out about 95% of particles. Where would we get one of those? I'll make one. Although we aren't likely to make a face mask at home that's as effective as an N95 mask, according to the CDC, any mask is better than no mask. And placing two layers of tightly woven cotton together can actually create a pretty good barrier against viruses. They recommend using a cotton that's about a 180 thread count or up. Let's talk minimum acceptable thread count. Another option that tested well was using one layer of cotton and one layer of flannel together. Flannel, so versatile. If you're trying to come up with the best fabrics around the house to use, we've got some helpful tips on how to evaluate what you already have. In addition, this helpful table from Cambridge University listed the fabrics that they found had the best balance between filtration and stability. So we recommend starting with the fabrics that are listed by Cambridge, using the testing methods we're gonna talk about, and then making your face mask. Let's get to work. Perform a light test. Take the material and hold it up to a bright light. If you see the light between the fibers, it's not a good filter. The next step is to test the fabric's breathability. Now to do this, simply fold over the fabric so it's double. Hold it up to your mouth and nose and see if you can actually breathe through it. A good face mask has to have a balance of filtration and breathability. Overall, the material used in tea towels actually ranked higher than those used in t-shirts and pillowcases. Seagal also mentioned using a thick jersey cotton, similar to what's used in stretchy t-shirts, because they performed quite well. If you're in need of a pattern, check the description box below. Some include sewing and some don't, so depending on your skill level, we have got you covered. I think I can do this. Can I borrow those giant scissors? Some of you may be wondering, well, what about care and cleaning? Once you get home, take your face mask off. Be careful not to touch your eyes, nose, or mouth. Then you can simply throw your face mask in the laundry like you would any other piece of laundry. The good news is regular soap and detergent should be enough to be capable of destroying viruses. Lastly, remember anything is better than nothing. Face coverings are recommended in addition to social distancing. That means we still keep our six foot distance from one another, but just include another protection to help flatten the curve of infections. You can do this. Oh, you can do it, I can do it. Again, thanks for watching, and until next time, I'll see you guys later.